Hi there, what's up? Darren here at Protopilot. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to build some checkboxes and we're also going to be building a multi-select. So let me just show you what we're going to be building here. So I've got these checkboxes which I can check on and off. And then I've also got this button at the bottom when pressed will select them all. So that's essentially what we're going to be building. So let me just bring in our starter file. get this to the correct size okay that's good okay so we're going to be using variables to to kind of drive the behavior of the chat boxes so the first thing I'm so we've got our variables panel down here in the bottom left hand corner so I'm going to be creating four variables so I'm just going to add these is going to be var variables for this scene um, if you wanted to have this chat box available for multiple scenes and you're using scenes in your prototype then you'd want to choose for all scenes but for this demo I'm just going to be using for this scene and I'm just going to have the default number variable I'm just going to rename this checkbox one and I'm just going to duplicate this three times and I'm going to create checkbox two checkbox three and finally check all so this is for our button at the bottom okay so we're just going to leave them all at their default values of zero okay so next up I'm going to select my first checkbox row and I'm going to add a tap trigger and I'm going to add a condition to this and I'm going to choose my first variable, which is checkbox one. And I'm going to set the condition to look for whether the checkbox is at zero or not. So checkbox one equals zero. Okay. So if we just open up our row group, we want to find the tick graphic. So with that selected, I'm going to come back to my condition and I'm going to add an opacity and I'm going to set the opacity to 100 okay I'm then going to select checkbox one and I'm going to add a color response to this and I'm going to make this color 007 Sorry, no, 0, 0, 0, 7, 5, 6. Making sure that um, I set the field to 100. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to add an assign response. And I'm going to choose the checkbox one variable, and I'm going to set the formula to one. Okay. Let's duplicate this condition. So that's Command D, Control D on Windows. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to change, so this is gonna be the, the other side of the checkbox um, functionality to turn it off. So I'm just going to set this from zero to one on the condition. The opacity is gonna go down to, of the tick down to zero. The color I'm going to set to a fill of zero and then finally I'm going to assign the value zero to my checkbox variable. Okay so let's test that to see if our checkbox is working correctly and we haven't messed anything up. Okay so select on, select off so it looks like that's all working all good. Okay I'm just going to apply this duplicate all of this and apply it to my other two checkboxes. Okay, so we've applied 
all of our targets, we've changed all our targets on these two duplicated um, triggers for the other two checkboxes. So let's just check. So we should now have three working checkboxes. So on off, on off, on off. Okay, that's cool. And let's just rename these to tap checkbox one, tap checkbox two, and finally tap checkbox three. Okay, that's cool. So that's the first bit done. So the next bit we want to um, set up the the check all capability on the button. So let's just close these up so we don't need to see these for a second. Um, let's just um, rename this select all. Um, so I'm going to add a tap trigger, making sure my select all is um, selected, just so that gives it, it auto populates the target when you, when you select the object first. And I'm going to add an assign response and it's going to look at the check all variable and it's going to going to assign that to one okay so that's that bit done so basically what that's doing is i'm going to tap this button and it's going to change this check all variable to one okay so next up we're going to add a detect trigger and we're going to use, choose that check all variable and we're looking to see this detect is, is effectively detecting when this check all variable changes and we're going to add a condition to this and we're going to select that check all variable and we're going to see we want to know when it changes to one and if the check all variable changes to one, we want to change our three checkboxes to one also. So we're going to add some assign responses. So we're going to choose our first checkbox one. And we're also going to assign that to one. We can in fact duplicate this a couple of times and we can just do the same for our checkbox two and our checkbox three. Okay, so that's the first side. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna duplicate the condition and we're gonna look for the opposite, which is zero. So if check all equals zero, we're gonna assign all these variables to zero. Cool, okay. So the final thing we need to do is we need to we need to also set up the um, the ability for these checkboxes to actually change. So we, we, we've we've used this detect to assign the variables um, of the checkbox one, two, and three to either zero or one, but we haven't actually reacted to that change and and actually given the ability for those checkboxes to change. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another detect. And we're going to choose the checkbox one variable. I'm going to add a condition. And we're going to choose that checkbox one variable and we're going to say, we're going to look for when it equals one. And if it equals one, we're going to, we go back to our checkbox one tick. We're going to add an opacity. And we're going to set it to 100. And then we're going to add a color response. And we're going to choose the checkbox one group. And we're going to set this to the same colors we set before. So that's 000756. Making sure we set the fill to 100. Okay, we're now going to duplicate this condition. So, Command D, 
And like before, we're just going to change that condition to 1, so we're going to do the reverse and reduce the opacity to 0 and change the color opacity to 0. Okay, so like before, we need to duplicate this detect trigger two times and we need to do exactly the same thing for the other two checkboxes. So just changing the targets from checkbox one to checkbox two and three respectively. So let's do that now. Okay, so we've now set up our detect for all three of our chat boxes. So let's now give that all a test. So if we select preview, we can see that our chat boxes are selecting singly. And then if I hit the select all button, we can see that all of them have been selected automatically. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this video. So um, just to explain what, what we've done here, um, we've effectively created three checkboxes and we've used these variables to drive whether they're checked or not. And we're using the variables to drive the be behavioral response changes um, based on conditions. And then what we've done with the select all is we've used the select all variable to also trigger the changing of the checkbox variables and then we've used that that the fact that we've changed the checkbox variable with these detects um, so that's looking to see when checkbox one for example has changed and then that's in turn driven the visual changes of the checkboxes so we're effectively using one variable's change to drive the change of another variable and then we've been using those detects to to make those visual changes so everything is driven by the variables changing to one or zero okay so um, it's a little bit a little bit more of an advanced um, topic so hopefully that was straightforward and you could follow along um, if you liked the video then please um, subscribe to the channel um, that really helps me really supports me create these videos and if there are any other things you'd like me to cover then please let me know in the comments and hopefully and also if you have any trouble following along have any issues then please feel free to contact me through the channel so that's the end of this video you have a great day and i'll see you next time